नमस्कार निजर आलोक रंजन वी हैव विथ अस टुडे ओजित सिंह एंड ही इज ए वन ऑफ द नोन एनवायरमेंटलिस्ट ऑफ आवर कंट्री ही इज एन एक्सपर्ट इन इकोलॉजी एंड ही हैज बीन टीचिंग विद मी एब्सोल्युटली फ्री फॉर माय स्टूडेंट इन माय इंग्लिश मीडियम एंड हिंदी मीडियम बैचेस बोथ एनवायरमेंट इकोलॉजी इन ज्योग्राफी नाउ लेट मी इंट्रोड्यूस यू थैंक यू ओजित सर फॉर कमिंग एंड जॉइनिंग मी आई एम एब्सोल्युटली डिलाइटेड टू हैव यू हियर विद मी इट्स अ इट्स अ रियल प्लेजर फॉर मी आई टेल यू दैट यू आर गोइंग टू रीच आउट ऑल द पुअर स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ दिस कंट्री द मिडिल क्लास स्टूडेंट ऑफ दिस कंट्री all the rural and suburban areas uh, which cannot come to delhi and spend a lot of money mm-hmm. for coaching classes exactly. generally the coaching classes will charge 2 lakhs mm-hmm. for english medium mm-hmm. but we are offering this course for 13000 rupees and that that is affordable for the students community mm-hmm. and thank you for offering your free classes to us thank you sir thank uh, you. i have few <laughs> questions for for uh, yes. for my course and yes. like uh, sir will be checking environment ecology and general science part of your syllabus and environment ecology and general science is very significant for preliminary examination in ias and pcs as well and it is very important for mains also even environmental pollution and the topics like climate change and global warming he is a real expert of all that now uh, sir tell me like what is your approach of teaching like if if you more dictate or if you more explain or there is a combination of dictation and explanation how you go about your teaching uh sir uh, in my experience tells me that uh, every student has their different way of learning Correct. so as a teacher we have to amalgamate and blend it together right so what i will do is if i keep on dictating it will take out their more time mm-hmm. so that is also not uh, suggestible mm-hmm. and some of the students may not prefer to sit and listen and keep on writing mm-hmm. so i'll be uh, using technical terms a little bit slowly mm-hmm. and will explain in such a manner that the student can write themselves right. uh, in the right. most correct manner students have to be more alert about uh, yes and uh, given an opportunity the student can raise any question any doubts it should be something that they have already learned and today they are gaining a new tools to learn something more interesting like again exactly, yeah. so we are not going to do what anything about really. answer writing and how would you prepare them for preliminary examination because in preliminary <laughs> environment ecology as a geography teacher i understand that uh, how the questions are coming from the environmental sciences rather than the general books which are available in the market so like what will be approach for prelims first right uh, for the preliminary as far as environmental ecology is concerned i would advise the student to uh, to to be really acute uh, as far as understanding of the terminologies given in one of the very interesting book that is ncert 12 standard biology yeah. so there are near about 20 30 technical terms right. and the student have to read first and the second reading they have to underline and they have to answer those technical terms in the most correct manner and once you are through that particular technical terms others are application of that so yeah, it's a very easy uh, at the same time uh, you can easily score even in geography optional it is required because yes, last yes. year amen selism was asked and that is found in the ncert <laughs> yes, biology book yes, yes. so uh, the one more question sir i mean in mains what should be the approach of writing it should be precise accurate and should uh, the students draw diagrams when writing ecology and environment um uh, my say su- more factual or explanatory my, or analytical uh, ex- my my suggestion to the uh, aspirants will be there is no need of attempting very complex diagram okay even your flow chart will do if the idea that you want to convey is correct hmm. or if you are uh, if you practice the earlier question paper and understand the things in the clearest and the best manner you can illustrate with your examples right so uh, it depends on student revising and practicing the earlier question paper and uh, attempting to understand the uh, what to say uh, exact uh, uh, exact uh, examples i mean uh, this doesn't mean that you have tons of examples right try to get the sense of it from your daily readings of newspaper or uh, from your uh, career books that you are reading mm-hmm. or the ncert that you are reading so there is no need of uh, going into very complex kind of a 
what to say, a a model. Very simple, right? Yes, yes, yes. Right yes, with yes, examples, yes, you right, can make examples. a flow chart. Yes, that yes, is somebody, yes, you know. yes. But uh, I think till now in the mains, uh, the UPSC has never asked which will demand a very schematic diagram from the students. They right. never have said that draw a need level diagram. That is not essential. But as far as prelims is, is concerned, mm -hmm. prelims will have 17 to 20 questions from environmental right. sciences and environmental right. ecology. Right. And mm -hmm. uh, from geography section, mm -hmm. I generally feel that 50% uh, questions can be solved. Yes. But the 50% mm -hmm. questions which mm -hmm. are there, they are mm -hmm. hardcore <laughs> environmental science. Uh -huh. And they ask from plant mm -hmm. genetics sometimes, yes, species yes. and gene yes. pool. Mm -hmm. So these questions look difficult to the uh -huh. students. Yes. So how to go about it? I mean, uh, newspaper is the uh, only source, or you have some more more to offer to my students? Oh uh, uh, yes. Uh, as far as the current affairs is concerned, you have the newspaper, and in newspaper you can refer to any of the standard national dailies. Right. For that, yes, as a teacher, sir, you know much better than me. We go for New York uh, Guardian. The New York Times, we read so many things so that the student have uh, the very confident examples uh, to give it to them. But for our students, we are there to help in that particular aspect uh, and for their preparation, read one national dailies. It may be the Hindu, it may be the Times of India or Indian Express. We are not going to become an editor of a newspaper. We just have to understand the uh, things and if it is important, then it will be there in other newspaper also. Uh, so uh, there is no need of being panicky that I'm not reading Hindu or I'm reading only uh, the Indian Express. Mm -hmm. Read one and whatever environmental things that comes, please own it. Environmental, environmental mm -hmm. ecology has yeah. also extended into mm -hmm. agricultural ecology. Yes, yes. Oh, and I'm, agroecology oh, oh, oh. as a teacher of geography. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. I have been checking uh, classes. Uh, yes, yes. But still, mm -hmm. it is not fulfilling the entire so, demand uh, of the UPSC. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, what I would suggest is. Read the NCRT, that portion of biology uh, 12 standard, mm. then read your newspaper mm. with understanding mm. uh, and with proper seriousness. Mm. Try to maintain a small diary. Mm. We used to cut the newspaper and paste it, but it never. we, we were never having time to read again. Mm. Always we think that I'll read it tomorrow is a good article, the very catchy, but you never. So what the student have to do is, if you want to swim, then directly you have to jump in the water. So if you think and if we say that this is important, then take out your news, uh, take out your uh, writing plate, mm -hmm. then write three lines of the 300 words that you read. Mm -hmm. Once you read and you write in your own uh, and also write one, two of the key words that is there in that newspaper, then remember you will never forget even after 10 years. Mm -hmm. So this is one exercise that the students should do. Then <clears throat> along with the NCRT, 12th Standard Biology, the last unit on environmental ecology, the student uh, should refer, as sir has already uh, preempted what I really wanted to say, the, uh, the Indian Agriculture section of the India Yearbook. Mm -hmm. And then you have the Science and Technology mm -hmm. uh, and any of the <laughs> career magazine that you read it because uh, environment uh, issue is very much influenced by the economy polity and the geography of the place right. so uh, you have said that 50% uh, of the question can be solved from geography but if the students are really uh, doing seriously then that if you could do 50% from the geography honors or geography reading uh, just open the, and broaden your uh, view, you already know that you have already got another 50 that is remaining. Mm -hmm. Because when you read a river, when you read a particular national park, when you locate a particular place in the geography, please also you just have to uh, uh, understand what kind of animals and plants are here and why that particular uh, Adivasi or the local or the forest dwellers, they we want to do some yes. research work of their own and uh -huh. for the greater detail. Yes, so. research in the sense they are not supposed to go and read the research articles or no, they have no, to. Internet search yeah, and all that, that yeah. or at least the students should ask these three questions while reading any of the Indian rivers. Mm -hmm. And what are they, those particular plants and animals which is endemic to this river that I am reading? Which area of India it is flowing and is there any conservation sites nearby?
and once you are sensitive to this then you know the environmental ecology and geography geography and environment ecology is inseparable inseparable it cannot happen it's not study in yeah. with holistic approach integrated yes, approach yes 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 sir, entire, yes, sir. Yes, sir. even if you mm. love uh, say penguin mm. uh, we cannot breed and we cannot naturalize penguin in the place where polar bears are there mm-hmm. so even though they are in the polar regions but this animals cannot be exchanged their uh, niche is different yes, habitat yes, will yes. Be different. so geography comes into geography picture comes, yeah. Yeah. so geography the life that is there um, mm-hmm. adapting to it is so closely so associated. be a good student of geography to resolve your problems of environment and ecology yes <laughs> and then sir will be <laughs> Yes. Okay, okay. Okay. Uh, thank you, Ajit sir, thank you. Thank for you, being sir. with us and offering you. your classes yeah. freely yes, to thank our you. institution. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, good morning to their aspirants. Today, I am just going to introduce the syllabi of civil services examination, a part of which is environmental ecology. So, in the environmental ecology, this particular terms and the concepts are given in the preliminary syllabi you will surely get general issues on environmental ecology biodiversity and climate change and in the mains we have conservation here the conservation means conservation of the biological diversity protection of the environment then we talk about environmental pollution and degradation and environmental impact assessment that talks about the rules and regulations that we uh, actively engage in while we are developing any kind of developmental projects in the country so that uh, any kind of bad impact if it comes or if it has a chance to come we may be able to protect it we may be able to prevent it so it is there in the mains and the uh, and the preliminary syllabi and in this particular case one will be surely able to have a sense from this particular given syllabi that in both the mains as it is overlapping so we cannot segregate that this is purely of main this is purely of the uh, what to say preliminary we if we do not know conservation environmental pollutions and degradation we may not be able to sense what is climate change and its impact and if we do not know biodiversity we cannot talk about conservation we might be totally confused what are the things that we need to conserve and where are the things that we need to put things in the proper order then the syllabus is also very clearly writing here it has environmental ecology so it means that we need to understand certain concepts which is specifically aligned towards the understanding of the environmental ecology it's very very specific in this case so we have different types of uh, studies associated with the environment there are there are so many uh, what is the categories as far as the studies of the environment is concerned that might be environmental history there might be uh, political the ecology there will be some kind of the things which is associated with many other branches many other categories that is associated directly or indirectly with the environment but here in this particular case the syllabus is very clearly mentioning about environmental ecology that means we need to study what is environment and we also need to understand what is meant by ecology so this particular syllabi if we look at what we will be doing is or the best means to understand and the best means to probe this particular syllabi for our own advantage for our own advantage that means as far as examination is concerned or as far as a very sensible citizen is concerned we will try to understand this particular syllabi by first of all trying to understand the concepts of environment and the concepts of ecology and we'll try to stitch it together then we will talk about the applied aspects of the environment applied aspects of the ecology or the applied aspects of the environmental ecology then we will be aware then we will be understanding that yes this rules and regulation this kind of governance is better for the environment and for the secured future so these are some of the things that we need to understand first of all we have to 
we are very clear as far as the concepts of the environment is concerned, concepts of the ecology is concerned, what is the difference between environment and ecology and ecosystem for example and what are the similarity between these particular terms and how do they synthesize to bring out what is called as the conservation, what is called as the environmental rules and regulations, environmental laws, so and so forth. So this is about the preliminary introduction to the syllabus of this particular uh, okay, chapter, this particular unit in the civil services general studies paper. So environmental ecology, we will talk about general issues on environment and ecology, biodiversity and climate change. Then we will talk about conservation of the biodiversity, environmental pollution that results into the climate change. We'll also talk about what is the similarity and differences between the change in the environment, the change in the climate and the climate change. And today we talk about Anthropocene, today we talk about what we call as climate crisis. So it is non-fictional, it is a reality and how real it is are we sensing it or not? Are we voicing against it or not? So this we will be talking about. And why should we sacrifice a piece of land which will be so much richly supplied with mineral resources? Okay, in the name of conservation of plants and the wild flora and fauna that covers that mineral rich zone. So that's kind of, there's a kind of issues that we will be facing while we are taking up any kind of developmental activities. So whenever developmental activity takes place, there is some kind of negotiation that has to go as far as the conservation of the granaries, conservation of the wild flora and fauna. So the country which is struggling to come out of the poverty, are we going to sacrifice that particular granaries? Are we going to sacrifice that particular mineral rich area? So this kind of dilemma, we will be able to solve it if we understand the importance of the environment, we understand the importance of conservations and biodiversity and also we understand the kind of development that we are projecting. So we need to take a particular step which is not going to annihilate those good things about the environment, ecology and the secured food future for everyone and we also will not be negotiating those kind of activities that is required to fuel the economy of the country which again will increase and will provide livelihoods to so many people and so and so forth. So this is something that we need to study. Now, <clears throat> let me just uh, give you the background why this particular subject has to be studied. Then we will come back to the uh, civil services syllabi so that we are acute, so that we enjoy studying this particular subject, so that we learn more, so that we are confident, right? to take a good decisions, to give a correct answers for the examinations. There is uh, very rightly, uh, what to say, uh, there, there is a very interesting statement, there is a very interesting idea that was given by Charles Dick Dickens uh, in his book called as a Tales of Two City. He said that this is the best of the time and this is the worst of the time. And you know, in this particular kind of the conditions, where is this environmental ecology located? Today is one of the marvelous uh, day, you know, when all the people in the world are struggling to come out of the COVID-19, coronavirus induced silence or restricted in every sphere of life. Today we talk about Pfizer and some company, they come together and coming out with a, an immunity booster or come out with a medicine that will prevent the spreading of the disease from one particular person to another person. This is a marvelous moment to be celebrating everywhere because we know at least a bright side of this dark tunnel that we have been traveling. For example, at least I can see that the normalcy will come back, right? At one point of time, you know, the Spanish flu during the World War, then we talk about the kind of pandemics that have really killed many millions of people in every historical parts of the human history and the culture. So today we are facing that kind of a war. The war is caused by a particular 
invisible virus which is too small to be seen by the naked eyes but we know that this particular virus has a large impact at it cast it a, such a wide shadow on every one of us but because of the discovery of a particular drug at least we are feeling very very safe or at least we know that our scientists our policy makers will be designing the things in a manner that we may be able to come out of this particular traumatic situation so this is one of the best so you talk about the politics you talk about the economics you talk about the productivity you talk about any kind of issues at least we believe that there will be a proper discourse there will be proper discussion and there are people who are like minded people who are pro towards the development and things will be better so that kind of imagination comes into picture when we know that human struggles are still going on say so for example at one point of time nobody have dared to go to the hospital because there was no anesthesia there was no antibiotics and if you are lucky enough the amputation of the leg because of the war that you fought you may recover or you may not recover at some point of time when there is no anesthesia people were traumatized brutalized even in the hospitals to have a major operation done but today because of anesthesia because of the development of new drugs i think major operation which may take 10 hours can be easily done so it has increases the human welfare today we have some of the dreaded diseases that we know what are the symptoms what are the prognosis what are the diagnosis and then we uh, we will save her later that is the best of the time right today we talk about the polluting ganga the polluting yamuna river but today we have programs like ganga yamuna rejuvenation program and the rivers are being restored to their original state even in the urban cities like delhi and many other metros in the country some of the wetlands are coming back to its original state thanks because of the human endeavor thanks because of scientific knowledge thanks because of the knowledge of environmental ecology so this is the best of the time but this is also the worst of time so what are the worst of time when we were growing it up to put a mask on the body you know to put an oxygen cylinder it seems to be a particular kind of a scene that we saw only in the hollywood movie like star trek he man for example these are animated movies that used to come in the doordarshan so uh, many of you might have not heard about this but we grew up like that when we were a regular student in the higher secondary or the secondary school level most of the discussions were nuclear holocaust right and people were wearing that mask and we were very much threatened world peace missiles these are some of the very very crazy stuff that really impinges on us and make us very worry make us very worry but at any point of time a particular indians who born and brought up in a village or a town will never think that some day i will not be attending my office some day i will not be attending my school some day i will not be dropping my daughter to her school because of the smog because of the pollution because of the suspended particulate materials in the environment nobody thought that some of uh, many people will die because of abnormal growth of the cell that is what we call as a cancer which is something that is very threatening and which is very frightening also it comes from inside some of the cells have forgotten to stop dividing then they keep on dividing keep on dividing keep on dividing and what results is what we call as a cancer so nobody knew about it nobody thought about that kind of element what at the most you do is you go and pray to your demigods and you go to the war and you might be killed because of infection or because you are hit by the spears or you are hit by the daggers but nobody knew that sitting at home cleaning organic eating organic food items at the most you go to a particular hospitals uh, as a staff or you go to the office as an office uh, persons but you know you have never indulged in any of the bad activities so called bad activities you don't eat any junk food but i find you find many of the cases people who do not indulge in any of the so called bad activities they also suffer from cancer so this is a worse of the time 
Then our environment is smog is 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 being polluted by some of the pollutants, and you cannot go out, and your childrens cannot go to the school. Cricketers cannot play in the cricket field, right? So that is a very very interesting and also very intriguing. And this happens at this particular point of time. So you have already reached the surface of the moon, collected the rocks, analyze it, and you predict so many things. Okay, that is the, that is this particular present uh, time. At the same time, at the same time, we have we have not gone to some of the hills, some of the abysses of the ocean to explore what kind of biodiversity is there, to explore and extract a chemical that might be safe for for my okay, cancer. So that is the kind of the. The things that you know, in one extreme, you have already the rich moon, and you have tried to go to the Mars and Venus. But at the same time, some areas of the world you are unable to go and find out what is there. And sometimes you don't have an attitudes. Sometimes you have an imagination. Sometimes you have not have that guts. Sometimes you do not want to invest to go to a particular hill, explore the wild plants and animals, and analyze the chemicals that is present there, and see that this is the bio indicators, and see that this particular plant will be some of the best. Filtration, some of the best materials to filter the heavy metals pollution in a particular site. We exactly do not know, but it is quite possible. How is it possible? We know from the ecosystem services, that is what we call as Millennium Ecosystem Services, that came out as a draft and finally it was published by the United Nations Organization during Kofi Annan's time. Something called Millennium Ecosystem Services is telling us very, very clearly to every person in the world that now, the, uh, when we are, uh, what to say, when we are undermining a particular animal, uh, we are forgetting that the best chocolate in the world, the best ice cream in the world, is thanks because of some of the sentient creatures like flies which we always try to kill and that fly is very diligently going to those particular orchid and is pollinating that particular plant plant is able to form the seed and the seed is planted and you get what is called vanilla so the vanilla ice cream that everyone is famous everyone is uh, very much okay liking to enjoy is thanks because of a tiny fly which helps in the pollinations and if this particular fly is not present see the kind of the taste see the kind of the quality that the ice cream that you would be enjoying so in one way or the other everyone is related in the environment and that is what environmental ecology tries to tell you so that our world is as colorful and beautiful as it is it is as tasty as it used to be and it is so habitable a place as it used to be but please remember when we talk about environmental ecology i can guarantee you that your grandfather who is 80 years old your great grandfather who was alive when your father was there they were the best ecologists they were the best environmentalists and thanks because of them thanks because of the knowledge of the environment that today at least i can take this particular small discourse the small advice that I could give you now because I get oxygen free of course in this particular room. Thanks because our forefathers knew that plants are important. They may not be knowing about carbon dioxide. They may not be knowing about the oxygen. They may not be knowing about the relationship between the carbon dioxide emissions and the environmental conditions. But they know from their life experiences that if they cut the tree and if they do not replant it, tomorrow the livelihoods will be at stake. And thanks because of this realization, today we see greeneries, today we see the rivers okay, flowing with its own current and fishes are swimming in the river, right? Tigers are happily living in the tiger reserves, not always in the zoological garden, right? Or zoo. So our forefathers knew about ecology and knew about their experience, their life experience, their life was so much entwined with the uh, with the surrounding environment so they were the best but they did not have the tools so what i want to say is 
this particular syllabi of the UPSC is not something which is too great a task that one cannot afford. Please remember, you are doing a particular study which is as old as human culture, which is as old as human life on this planet Earth. So it's not something new. What is new to you is the new tools that you have developed in order to understand what is there inside. For example, cell was not created by the scientists. Okay, cell was not created by a particular scientist, particular biologist whom we call a cytologist the person who is expert in science of the sales. No, it was already created. It was created before Darwin. It was created before Hembol. It was created between, before Splendini. It was created before every one of us. But what is the difference between the sales that you carry and idea of cell that a particular person who is claimed to be a cytologist, expert in cell science says? The only thing is that he have studied 40 years and Engineers have come out with magnifying lenses. Some of the magnifying lenses which is fired by the radioactivity, it can enlarge the pictures of the cells into a million times and he know that, okay, this is the ribosome that manufactures proteins. This is mitochondria, that is the cellular component or the organelles that is responsible for the liberation of energy. That is a new tool. But this is not created by you and me. It, was, it has been already there. It was evolved before our knowledge of, about this particular okay, structures in the cell. So like this, this environment was not created by you and me. It was not created by our forefathers and the grandmother and grandfathers. It, had, it was used to be there before human beings came on this particular platform called as the earth. And this particular group of people who never went to the university, but they went outside of their of their caves to hunt for the food items when the tigers are around, to hunt for the food items when the leopards are around, to hunt for the food items when the rainfall is too much, to hunt for the food items when the flood is there, to hunt for the food items in the Kalari Desert when the sun is shining on top of your head. So at that particular time they realized that okay if I go at this particular point of time I will meet this one so better I go in the evening. If I go in the evening I might be missing this particular food items so I need to go in the morning. Exactly that is what is being done in the semi-domesticated system like agricultural field. So the farmer knew that what type of rice should I be growing in this area, what type of wheat I should be growing at this particular area because of the life experiences. Then they started dom domesticating them in their agricultural field. And that is how humans have been feeding. That is how they have been feeding us. So they knew about the relationship between the rise and the soil and the rainfall and the wind and the insects and the birds. And that is the reason why we are having this particular civilization today. And But what is this particular knowledge about insect coming, pollinating a particular fruit and fruit is being eaten by a monkey, seed is falling on the ground, then the plant is coming up, you cut it and make your house and establish a family. Is not it an ecology of the environment? Yes, it is an ecology and environment, right? So what is the difference between that experiences and today's knowledge, today's syllabus is today when we talk about environmental ecology, we have in our packet, in our basket, many tools to understand, magnify them, enjoy them more, understand deeper. But knowledge of this environmental ecology is not new. The only newness here is the new tools. Right? Thomas Malthus was saying in 1770s that human population is increasing geometrically, right? And the food productivity is increasing in an arithmetic manner. So at a particular point of time, there will be competition, disease, pestilence, and all this will, okay, swipe away the human population. He knew it, right? The only thing is that in the 20th century, we started coming out with a mathematical formula to understand this particular economist idea, which is based on the productivity of the agricultural field and the human reproduction and consumption 
of those limited resources, right? So that is a new tune. So today we talk about population growth of a tiger in Ranthambor. What is the rate? What is the rate of increase of the population of the deer? Their population is increasing. That's why the tiger population is increasing. The deer population increased, tiger consume, tiger reproduce. After some time, this particular cycle results in what? Controlling the population of the deer. Controlling the population of the deer, again, will restrict the increase in the population of tiger when the tiger population is reduced now the deer will again increase but all these things is also associated with the kind of visitation that you are finding if the visitation is good deer population will also be good tiger population will also be good if the visitation population is good then soil fertility will be maintained soil microfauna and flora will be maintained visitation is good and erosion will be stopped visitation is good then too much of the extreme of the flood and drought will also be reduced and this is what is imagined as an ecosystem balance right so there are certain kind of relationship between different groups of animals and plants living in a particular area and we try to study them we try, try to categorize them we try to probe deeper into it with the help of new tools of mathematics new tools of bioengineering new tools of toxicology new tools of population ecology new tools of politics new tools of political ecology new tools of chemistry by all these new tools you Take it and try to apply to understand this relationship. That is the only newness in this, right? But otherwise, it is not new. The only newness, again, is some of the beautiful things that we have seen. Minamata disease, right? Then Bhopal gas tragedy. I'm so sorry. Okay. So, uh, so these are something that we have created. And this kind of things, nuclear holocaust or the nuclear reactor disaster in Chernobyl in 1986, these are what we have introduced to this particular ecosystem. But when this kind of things are introduced, how would I restore back to its original state? This particular knowledge of ecology and environment will help you. So at this particular point of time, which is the best of the time, and which is also the worst of the time. So in order to see this worst of the time situations and make it better, environmental ecology will be one of the tools. I will not claim that this is the best subject in the world. This is the easiest subject in the world that I can claim. But this is the best of the subject I cannot claim. But I can claim with certain amount of confidence from my own experiences that study of the ecology and environment will be one of the partners of all the good things that might help the earth remain or restored as a very secured and livable okay for every one of us so in this particular study of environmental inequality what we generally do is we try to study the concepts first and this particular concepts might be very much boring for some of the students then we will apply this particular concepts we will apply this particular concept and then we will try to see okay, how this particular subjects or how this particular subject is useful in order to what to say help or in order to derive some of the negotiating tools. So we know that today is the time when the climate is changing like anything. We are in a crisis. Many of the people's livelihoods are at stake. Many of the nations, they are being affected, not only one, all of them. Okay. Today is a situation when you are standing in a river, fast current of water and the water level is here. But when you stand it up, up after some time water level is here. Now the water is reaching just at the tip of your nose and you do not know how to swim. So at that particular time, what are the situations, right? So, in, so that's the kind of situations. So in this particular situation, we should be deriving new knowledge, we should be appreciating the old knowledge, we should also be regarding the traditional knowledge of how the people have been living in that riverine ecosystem, how people for generations have been living in that particular desert and try to derive something significant for our own and for our own futures, right? So. 
this particular concept seems to be very boring to many students, right? Because in a four-sided wall, you are just imagining about a particular bird chirping and singing in Jim Corbett National Park, right? You cannot go there, but you just have to imagine sitting in this room, right? So that's, that, that is what is called concept, right? Newton had never gone to the surface of the moon, but Newtonian calculus had already paved the way for us to go to the surface of the moon. So see how the concepts are important. When the rocket is being sent in the sky, you are still using those particular Newtonian physics and the mathematics that was conceptualized long time ago. And after so many generations also, you are replicating, you are reproducing, that it is true. So that is, so that's why, you know, conceptual clarity is very important and concepts stains against time and place and concepts building requires a lot of guts and lot of hard work and lot of understanding and lot of, you know, traveling on pins and needles. But once you know how to go, once you start enjoying those concepts, you know, no one will stop you. It will be addictive. So here in this particular case, I am going to introduce in the first class or in the coming uh, classes, okay, so we will be talking about how boring it is, but at the same time, how useful it is. And at the same time, we try to create a particular conditions where you will be feeling very close to it. Here you will be feeling very much interested. And once you started having interest in it, I say it is addiction, is an addictive. Whenever you open the pages, you will see the environmental ecology in it. When somebody talk about it, you will see the environmental ecology in it. When somebody is coming on the street, in the parliament street, to raise their voice against the increase of the Narmada Dam, you will see ecology and environment in it. When some of the farmers see Sitting in the border and fighting against the established institution about the minimum support price, you will see the ecology in it, right? So that's the kind of a thing. Suppose if a corporate, okay, a corporate uh, firms are coming and buying the seats, and where will that next seats will come from? From the corporate house, for example. And tomorrow the corporate house will say that no, this potato you cannot do it. We want to put, produce a particular potato of big size. Once you collect it, few of them will pick in a lay or the potato chips and will be sold all over the world. Taste should be similar everywhere. Size should be similar everywhere. So even if a particular country like Peru might be having 200 varieties of potato, India might be having 300 varieties of potato, but the corporate firms will always wish that you cultivate a particular shape, size, taste of a particular potato. And for that, you need to take the help of them. So what about those particular marginal farmers who are expert in cultivating a particular variety of potato? I guarantee you, the kind of potato varieties that my grandmother used to grow in her field, say 80 years ago, is totally different from what you grow now. Right? So if, and, and who knows that those particular potatoes are gone from the pellet, gone from the market, gone from the seed banks. Suppose if my grandfather, okay, has taught me, okay, his grandson to grow that and that particular potato is no longer available and tomorrow you are introduced a new particular potato which requires induction of the chemicals, pesticide, which requires proper irrigation, which requires a particular kind of watering at a particular time when the monsoon is not there, when the winter rainfall is not there, when the, when the rivers are getting dry but you have to use a borehole and you do it. Only the rich people can do that, right? So, but a particular community, a particular group of okay, tribes or a particular group of the uh, forest dwellers have been living in that area. So they know what kind of plants, what kind of animals, what kind of insects, what kind of food, what kind of house that will be adopted to the reasons that knowledge is going to, over, going to be no longer useful if a particular variety of crop without understanding the local culture, local way of living, you introduce, okay? So that, that's something, you know, which will be very much useful when we talk about environmental impact assessment, social impact assessment, and how change in the climate, and how change in the agricultural activity is changing, right? So when a particular dam 
is increased. You will say that we get a lot of hydroelectric power project, but a slight increase in the height of a big dam, a big reservoir is going to be created. Millions of tons and gallons of water has to be stored. So it definitely will involve flooding of many of the villages. Where will they go? Right? If you don't do proper kind of packages given, where will they go? But this particular village is, we say, we are the fishermen. We have been fishing this area for generations. We don't know what to do. Even if a particular government is giving them a multi-storied building in Katak in Orisha or Bhuvaneshwar in Orisha or Imphal in Manipur right, or Velour in Tamil Nadu or for example a particular tribes of Vayana districts in Kerala is given a particular area in say for example Kozikot, whatever it is, they might be having a home in the city but Living inside a big building is not going to fulfill their desire. They will come out of it, they go for hunting, they cannot hunt. Whatever things that these particular fellows will be having at home is to buy from the market. Right? And whatever a particular fellow has to do is to do agriculture when they are traditionally fishermen. Right? So there will be a fight between the resident fishermen, resident for example, agriculturists and the one which is coming new. Okay, This is what Amitabh, uh, Amitabh Ghos is talking about, the climate refuses. So what we will be looking at here is why a particular group of communities, their way, their living system has to be understood before we introduce any kind of developmental activities. So I was talking about increase in the dime height, it will cover a large area of land and that particular area, lot of the villages will be flooded, inundated. Where will they go? They will come to the city. When they come to the city, everything has to be bound. One chapati, two rupees, okay. but they don't have. And they don't know how to earn. So you go to the offices, you will say that, what is your name? Can you write in English? Can you write in Sanskrit? Can you do MS Word? These fellows will say that, no, what at the most I can do is I can be sweeping your office room. And this fellow will say that we have a lot of sweepers. Where will they go? Then this particular fellow who have left their villages, their livelihoods, which is affected by the flood, created by humans or by the climate change, come to the city, they will be very prone to any kind of criminal or anti-social egg because that egg will give him sustenance, will give him the chance to exist. So a person will be very much vulnerable to any kind of egg that is given to him to earn his chapati, to earn his one plate of rice. So who knows that the criminal activities in the slum areas, criminal activities in a city might be in one way or the other associated with some kind of environmental wrongs which have happened in their natural home. So it's quite possible. So environmental and ecology is not about insects, birds, monkeys. It's also about human beings, how we have been living in a particular area, how we have been sensing the things that surround us, right? How our culture has derived from the environment, right? How our future is so strongly anchored to the well-being of that particular surrounding, water bodies, hills, lane, fields, right? So we will talk about the concepts to understand all these things in the most correct manner, to understand all these things so that we get the maximum mark in this particular chapter. I will not be frightening you, but yes, the number of the questions from environmental ecology has increased. This year, they have asked more of the questions from the current affairs associated with environment, but in some year, they ask some of the concepts which is Okay, which uh, student uh, listening for the first time will not be able to solve it, right? So UBSC can do anything be because all these things are within the syllabus, right? It is not something like that it is uh, away from the syllabus, it's within the syllabus. But please look at the 10 years question paper and you know that these particular questions are all doable provided you read your newspaper correctly on time and you also know some of the basics of the environmental ecology. So that basics of the environmental ecology which people, 90% of the aspirants think that is very boring and dull and 
I it should be okay I buy one book and I read it whatever it comes I will keep it whatever it doesn't I, I cannot that will not solve because this is a subject which will be required for clearing the exam so simply this will also be the subject which will help you in executing your duty as a civil servant in the most efficient manner so it's a good subject right now 2015 September, Millennium Development Goal was replaced by Sustainable Development Goals. And the Sustainable Development Goals talks about 17 concrete goals. And the 17 concrete goals are mainstreaming biodiversity. Every one of this particular okay, target or this particular goals is associated with biodiversity. <coughs> Sorry, sustainable development goal is the economic model of the coming century, right? Of this present century, and this sustainable development goal is based on biodiversity. So, how biodiversity is important to direct our economy, our politics, our future? Coronavirus that has resulted into the pandemic situation that we are embroiled now said that it's also because of the climate change it's also because of the environmental degradation how you know the malaria dengue chikungunya yellow fever these are some of the diseases some of the elements that the wild animals were suffering because of the life cycle of that particular group of pathogens in a particular environment especially in the deepest part of the jungle but because of human population increase, urbanization, we started going to the forest more and more for logging industry, for cutting the woods, for development of the roads. So those particular cycles that used to be there among this organism, we break the cycle and introduce ourselves. And we become the prey. And once we are introduced to it, and when I come to the city, what happened? I live with hundreds of my friends and hundreds of my friends are again with thousands of other friends. That's how the diseases have spread all over the world. So it is believed that because of the poverty, because of the people's craziness to exploit the wildlife, people started going to the city, from the cities to the urban, to the hinterlands, to the forest. To get the meat from the wild and people are crazy that wild meats are more tastier and healthier. But you never knew that wild meat can also be hosting many of the pathogens which your body is unknown till yet. But now you expose. So those particular diseases that come from the wild animals to us is called zoonotic diseases and people are believing that coronavirus might have spread to humans through the zoonosis, through the wild animals. Right? This is quite possible and it's one of the most widely accepted theory. And which has resulted into investment of huge amount of money. This particular money that we are going to give to Pfizer, had it been to develop the schools in India or the toilets of the girls' schools, I think that will change the sanitary condition, that will change the attitudes, that will change the gender disparities that we have. But So this happens because of our non-understanding of the environment, non-understanding of the relationship between organisms with, plant, with another organisms, right? So this particular subject will be very addictive once you know the concepts well. So in this particular class, what we'll be doing, first of all, we will talk about what is environment, what is environment? We'll talk about it to understand what is meant by ecology, to understand what is called as environmental ecology. We will also be talking about terms like ecosystem. What? How do we define ecosystem, right? So this, uh, so ecosystem will define and uh, what is ecosystem, how large that ecosystem is, how small is ecosystem. And once we know about the ecosystem, then we started knowing what is grassland, what is a forest, why a forest is called as the uh, forest as uh, was a coniferous forest, why this particular forest is tropical evergreen forest, why is a deciduous forest, why this grassland is called as a prairie, why that particular grassland is called Serengeti, not savanna, why is it called as a pampas, right? And why it is called as a tundra, 
I think the tundras are found in the Arctic regions only. But why do we find Arctic? Okay, uh, tundra like tundra in the alpine conditions. What is wrong there? Right. This we will talk about. And once we know about this particular grassland, this wetland, this coral island, then we will know that there is something called biosphere. Right. And then there are biomes. Okay. So once you know this ecosystem, once you know what is community, once you know what is a population of tiger in Sundarban Delta, then you will be knowing about Sundarban Delta. And if you know the Sundarban Delta, then you know the parameters that created this Sundarban Delta, right? Then once you know about this, you know about the biomes of that particular area. Once you know the biomes of that area, you will know this biomes, how it is associated with the other biomes. And from there you will know the concepts of conservation of whole of the biomes, whole of the earth. The earth is only one, but we have many millions of species. What is wrong here? In one room, I cannot pick up so many things. But how come the earth is only one? The size has not increased. But why we are discovering new species, right? So that we will try to know that. We will not, we'll not, we'll try to understand what, what is the basic okay, uh, reason behind. So ecosystem, we'll talk about it. We can say that ecosystem can be an artificial ecosystem like your aquarium. It can be a natural ecosystem like the small puddles, you know, that is formed during the rainy season. When the rainy season comes, water collected in the small potholes and from there the frogs are jumping out. That is also ecosystem, right? An ecosystem can be as majestic and large as the Pacific Ocean. So we'll try to know it. What Then why do you call it an ecosystem? So is this ecosystem depending on the size? You say that ocean is also ecosystem. You said river is also an ecosystem. You said one single drop of water can also be called as an ecosystem. And we said that ecosystem because there is a relationship. We call it as ecosystem because there is a relationship. Then you started asking what is the relationship? And when you start asking what is a relationship, then you do what is called ecology. So ecology is a relationship that you find in any of the ecosystem. Then what is ecosystem? Ecosystem is any place where there is a relationship. Okay, if there is a relationship between a plant and an animal that is grazing on it and sunshine is taking place for photosynthesis, you know the ecosystem is already established. Right? So once the ecosystem is there, then living organisms should be there, non-living components should be there, and they should be interacting. That is ecosystem. If it is interacting, then what type of interactions are there? That is what is ecology. You know about mutualism between the clownfish and sea anemone, right? So the relationship is there. You know the parasite and the host, there is a relationship. Malarial parasite and me, there is a relationship. Right? A tiger is eating a particular deer, so there is a relationship of predation. If a particular deer called Nilgai is competing with a, sham, uh, a Sambar is uh, what say, fighting with another of the antelopes, okay, right? For getting a particular green, okay, plant's leaves, the competition, this is also a relationship, right? How during the rainy season a particular grasses are growing? How in the spring season certain flowers are blooming? There is a relationship between plants with the sunshine, with the duration of light, with the duration of night of a particular season of the year. So it's something like a biological clock. So there is a relationship. Okay? And relationship is what is called ecology. And where do you find this relationship? In the ecosystem. Okay, then what is environment? Environment is your surrounding. So can I have ecology in the surrounding? Yes, in your surrounding there might be a relationship. Right? So environment is the immediate surrounding of an organism. And as far as the environment is concerned, we have many of the nodal agencies to look into it. Right? So once we know this particular basic concepts of what is ecosystem, what is ecology, what is environment, Okay, that's something that we need to probe, right? Then we said population. Then we talk about community, different populations living together, the relationship, right? So this is about what we are going Then we talk about biodiversity. What is biodiversity? Biodiversity, as the name indicates, this is the diversities of organism, different. For example, humans are different from crocodiles. Crocodiles are different from python. Pythons are not cobra. 
right? These are different species, different organisms. A tiger is different from wolves. A wolf is not a lion. A lion is not a deer, and deer is not, again, uh, a particular earthworm. So these are different species. Okay, mango is different from pomegranate. Pomegranates are different from oranges. Oranges are not guava. Guavas are not apple. These are different species, right? So biodiversity is different species. Biodiversity is also about different genes that we carry, right? Different genetic, the inner blueprint for us, okay? Genes. Biodiversity is also about different places that you find, different habitats, rivers, mountains, desert. These are also biodiversity. So biodiversity is the sum total of all the different organisms, their genetic differences, and also the places where they are found. This is called biodiversity. You know, why do we conserve biodiversity then? We conserve biological diversity because it is important. How do you say that it is important? You know, biodiversity is useful for food. I think almost all the students, except a robot in this class, right? They all have breakfast, come for the class. They all have lunch, and they come for the class. They all eat something to derive energy, right? And if you remember any of the food items that you had consumed, you know that you are directly or indirectly depending on biodiversity. Somebody will say, I have eaten chapati. What is chapati, by the way? It is the grass, it is the product of a grass. Call it the wheat. Wheat is a grass, monocot. Right? Biodiversity. No, no, no. I take it from the plastic. The pizza was already. By. What is pizza? What are the ingredients of pizza, right? So everything is derived from bi biodiversity, your food. Biodiversity is medicine. Every medicine you talk about, it is directly derived from either plants or animals and then you use the microbes to just engineer so that they started producing insulin for us right like genetic engineering it is a medicine biodiversity is livelihoods many of the poor people who do not have a fish farm they go to the river they go to the lake they go to the pond they go to the field collect this fresh water and sell in the market and running this family or her family it's a livelihood. The tribals will go in the hill, cut the trees, sell in the market. Livelihood. You go to the field, collect a particular vegetables, eat it, remaining sell in the market. Livelihood. Right? Biodiversity is livelihood. Even a particular cricketer like Sachin Tendulkar is depending on biodiversity. His bait is not made of copper. It's made from a wood, right? And the wood is again collected from a particular species of plant, right? It's a dress that you are wearing. Okay? Everything, everything in this room, a lot of artificial things might be there in this room. But if you talk to every ingredients in this room, you know that you are deriving things from the nature, from the environment, from the biodiversity. The water you drink, you say that my water is coming from Aru. But this particular water that you are filling in the overhead tank, coming to your RO system, is being provided by rainfall, by the groundwater, and groundwater, or the surface water, or the rainwater, all these things again are associated with the transpiration of the water droplets from the lips of the plant. Evaporation of water from the surface of the earth, evaporation of water from the surface of the ocean, right? So in one way or the other, biodiversity is giving you... Biodiversity is about economy. Things are getting and then you sell it, right? You talk about this particular drug, uh, the emergency drug against the coronavirus, right? So that particular economy that the pharma company is depending on is derived from the surrounding. Right? So that's, that's biodiversity is economy. Biodiversity is culture. For example, when we... Uh, do any kind of the rituals, any kind of the rituals or the puja, for example, we always use certain plants, certain animals, right, from our surrounding to complete our celebration, to complete our rituals. So in religious ritual activities or in the various ritual activities or you go to church, you go to monastery, you go to mosques, you go to your home, you go and see the temples that you maintain in your room. You know, in the rituals, biodiversity is very much part of it, right? So biodiversity is also culture. Biodiversity also gives you recreation. 
you want to see elephant you want to see rhinoceros you want to hug a tiger you not the plastic stuff one you want to go and really see a tiger right people are spending huge amount of money waiting for days and days to see and have a glimpse of a wild animal there right so recreation you go to the zoo for recreation education right so biodiversity also gives us recreation also gives us okay fun we go to tourist center biodiversity is also about the habitat is also about the hills and plants and the mountain so why do you go to alps mountain why do you go and see tiger hill in darjeeling why do you go to kanchanjunga why do you go to mount everest right it is also a part of the biodiversity right so it gives you adventure it gives you fun it gives you education so biodiversity biodiversity is also useful to maintain the climate and the weather okay from being very extreme to make it moderate if there is a lot of visitation proper visitation so much of the rainfall the water will be absorbed very nicely slowly and the soil will be thin but if you remove all this visitation the water will be heating the rain water will be heating so much then all the good fertility sedimentations and all this particular layer of soils will get drawn could drain and uh, will sediment somewhere else in the river and the river's holding capacity of water is compromised and flood is coming right so that is the reason why plantation like afforestation is one of the best way to sequester climate change right is very interesting so biodiversity will also be the best solution to fight against the modern okay negatives and the impacts of development right so biodiversity is one so where how do we conserve biodiversity we conserve biological diversity by different many okay means <clears throat> so as far as the biodiversity is concerned then we will be talking about where are the places in the world where biodiversity is more and we say that there are some of the countries in the world which is called as mega biodiversity rich countries where india is also one of them so very interestingly mega biodiversity rich countries are those countries which are extremely rich in their biodiversity right they have a huge uh, collection with a huge presence of plants and animals right so these are the places where you need attention okay and among this particular countries again there are some reasons where biodiversity is you know it is is not proportionate to others it is uh, it is uh, what to say it is much much more than the others okay so if you see all of the world there are mega biodiversity rich countries but there are certain regions in the world which might cross the boundary of the country which are rich in biodiversity and they say that near about 1500 species of the plant species are found there which is not found anywhere else in the world and this particular places where environmental degradation is so much that their total area has reduced to only 30% in the last few decades <clears throat> then we say that this particular area is mainly dominated or is uh, the the uh, this particular area is mainly found to be occupied inhabited by the poor people see the thing people are poor so their livelihood they will cut the trees do the agriculture but this is a area where the forest is shrinking where the lake is shrinking this is also the area where more biodiversity is situated there and this is the area which we call as biodiversity hotspots so biodiversity hotspots if you i spend 100 rupees in paris okay 10 square kilometers if i spend say 100 in paris and 100 dollars in the saudi sn countries forest that 100 rupees that you spend to conserve the biodiversity in saudi sn countries is going to get this much dividends and this much of the raw materials for the pharma industry that is there in france this giving you one example but there are a lot of limitation in this particular argument we'll talk about later so what i want to say here is this particular area which is rich in biodiversity at the same time this particular area is inhabited by the poor people at the same time this particular area is losing the biodiversity is getting threatened then what do you do 
suppose if I have two friends in my PG, one of them is healthy, going to the gym, another person has been detected with dengue and now I have 100 rupees, so please tell me whether you will buy this 100 rupees banana for your friend who had gone to the gym or you will book a rickshaw and go to the hospital for your friend who is suffering from dengue. I will definitely be spending the money for the friend who is suffering from dengue because both of them are good, both of them are my friends but at that particular time that 100 person, 100 rupees should be spent for my friend who is suffering from dengue, right? So that, that's, a, that's the kind of things because conservation of the biodiversity requires time Conservation of biodiversity requires money and you know time and money, the time, money, knowledge, this is not owned by everyone, right? And at the same time they are very costly, right? That is the reason why when we are having the lack of money, lack of time, lack of knowledge, we better spend this particular limited resources to those places where the benefits will be more. Right? And that's the reason why we concentrate conservation of the biodiversity. We invest more to those areas which we call as biodiversity hotspots. Now somebody will argue, are you saying that some of the insects and plants and trees of northeastern India are better than those I find in Delhi, Lucknow, Hyderabad? Okay, that, that's also a reasonable argument, right? A person from France will also say that, are you saying that those particular birds and animals and rivers and biodiversity of France and Paris is inferior to that you find in Southeast Asian countries? Should we not conserve here? Should we spend money? So that's why some people will talk about biodiversity coal sports. But we will not go into that details for the time being. We will try to explore that more and more. And we will try to establish that, yes, conserving biodiversity everywhere is our goal. But right now, right now, whether I should be spending the money for my friend who is suffering from dengue or my friend who had gone to the gym, okay, to tone his muscles and is healthy, wealthy and wise. Or for that particular friend who is wise but who is not healthy for the time being, right? So, we have this particular biodiversity, okay, what is biodiversity, why are they important and uh, where we should be conserving them. Also, we give all the animals in India is important, all the animals in a particular forest is important, then why do you allocate a certain area as tiger reserve? Do you think that deers are not important? Do you think that some of these particular trees are not important? Why do you say tiger reserve? Why do you say the river gangetic dolphins reserve? Why do you say it is rhino reserve? Why do you call it as an elephant corridor? Why are we giving certain credits, certain significance? Why are we bringing some of the animals, some of the plants, okay, ahead of others in the context of conservation, in the context of investment, right? That is again one argument. Then how will we classify those particular organisms which needs our attention more? Then IUCN, there is an institution, International Union of Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources, they say that we need to conserve every species in the world, but we need to give emphasis, we need to give our time and money more to those particular species which are called critically endangered, which are called as endangered species, which are called as vulnerable species, which you categorize them as threatened species, which you categorize them as threatened species. So those particular species which are threatened because their critical number is so less, because their habitat is dying out, right? Or because a few generation, if we don't take care of it, we means human, we do not take care of it, they will go into extinction. They will go into extinction in the wild. They will no longer be available. They will be found only in the form of films and the pictures and stories of the fossils of the moss. So, IUCN come out with a particular 
okay data driven kind of a figures and the idea uh, and the status of the animals and plants now they have included fungi also which we call as list of threatened species of plants and animals and fungi IUCN is not giving the status to the group of organisms like bacteria like virus it is giving the status to three of this particular phylum one is plant animals and fungi so this is about the threatened species so we need to conserve we need to give emphasis to the threatened species to the biodiversity hotspots the mega biodiversity rich countries right so we'll again argue what about the others okay what about the others why this particular area alone that's again is a big thing that we need to explore more so after the environmental the ecology we uh, after this particular Okay, yes so we try to see how do we conserve biodiversity we conserve biodiversity by using two approaches approaches means philosophy right you sitting in the room attending the online class is your philosophy because you want to earn you want to learn you want to gain knowledge but i will not go to the class and take physical class i am walking in an office it's better those particular materials are available live in my own room i'll have a cup of tea i can go to my kitchen i can take the pen and pencils from my drawer and i will be sitting in my armchair nicely listen make the notes that's your philosophy somebody will say that i want to earn knowledge i want to gain the knowledge from a particular institution but i will personally go and experience that your philosophy the same is the case the conservation of the plants and animals can take place in the same place where they are naturally found okay in the same habitat this you call it as in situ in situ if you want to conserve a particular animals or plants away from its habitat you call it ex situ So these are the two approach all the conservation efforts all over the world is based on this particular two concept one is called as in situ another one is called as an ex situ in situ means if you want to increase and protect the tiger then please protect and increase the population in the same place where they are born which you call is a natural habitat not where the zoo is there not here in this city okay where they are used for display it is good that the giant panda population increase in germany in zoo but that is all because of human protection if you release the gate and let them go outside that particular animal will die because it's not a natural home but in a particular place called wulong national park in china if you release that particular panda will be happily hunting the bamboo and will be reproducing naturally without humans intervention that is what is called in situ in situ this is i and the one which is away this is called ex situ both of them are important it will be wrong to say that one is better than the other it depends on the condition suppose every day i go to the gym i am walking say 5 kilometers every day which is very less i cannot i don't walk even that particular distance whenever i have a time to walk i think that i should be reading something so but yes but my friends some of them are very crazy and they go that today also i got a message from my friend that i have already traveled 20 kilometers on walk just too much for me but anyway so <clears throat> when a particular person is healthy attending his health well i will not go and advise that, oh you have run 24 kilometers yesterday very good now you go to the subdarjan hospital tomorrow and get your appendix removed <laughs> should i say i will not say until and unless his appendix is going to be blasted soon right but if a particular person in my family is having a heart attack then the best thing is i take an ambulance and take the person to the emergency ward of the hospital or the cardiologist is contacted and shock is given and he is alive again and coming back at home so at some point of the time when all the city is covered by layers and layers of toxic chemicals and there is a bird called as the vulture right and the vulture cannot be released cannot be left alone in that particular field 
because whatever food they will be eating is toxic to them so what i will do is i will go to i will go outside and collect the vulture and keep in a particular nice place where i'm giving the proper non poison food items so that they grow at the same time i will knock the door of the policy makers and said you look there is a lot of vulture dying because there is a lot of pollutants in the river in the fill in the okay gutters please draft and ache please record it please make it a law that people uh, law that people do not use diclofenac painkiller and give it to their cows and buffaloes people do not throw their poison animals outside right you make a law and after one year after two year after six months your environment become cleaner what happened here you are making the vulture breed in your room then now population is increasing now you can come back and release in the environment okay that is what is an example of x c2 conservation you don't want this vulture to die so you go there and find out the healthy vultures let them grow away from the habitats so that when time comes when the condition is favorable you release back to its natural habitat this is what is called x so that's so important at the same time there is an in situ conservation which says that the vulture should be conserved or the horn will should be conserved or a particular rhino should be conserved in the natural home in the jungles or in the grassland so we have in situ and the x situ conservation as two of the approaches of the conservations in this again we will be talking about different steps in the class okay different steps in the class so there is an approach and the approach will be implemented by using different kind of a step so we have zoological garden we have the seed bank germplasm bank captive breeding site here in this you have national park wildlife sanctuary Uh, then we have the sacred groves we have protected areas we have community reserve you have the conservation reserve and so and so these are the steps these are the methods but this too is this too is what is called as an approach to the conservations right and then we'll talk about the success stories of all of them which one has gained successes which one have gained successes what are the disadvantages or the limitations so that we can improve upon we can work further to make it as successful as possible today this particular biodiversity is getting lost what are the cause of the loss of biodiversity we will talk about environmental pollution we talk about invasive alien species we talk about the exploitation uh, where we go to the jungles and started killing all the birds and sell in the market or we cut down all the big trees which have been growing for 300 years and then it will take another 600 years to grow so if you do it more than it's uh, uh, it's uh, uh its natural capacity to rebounds then we call it an extraction over extraction over harvesting of the medicinal plants all these things are causing a lot of loss to the biodiversity right that's why we need to conserve because our livelihood our future is at stake if we do not conserve then we will talk about pollution in the environment the pollution chapter here upsc is not going to demand a scientist from you is not going to demand uh, what to say an, uh, an higher a highly educated uh, what to say uh, uh, scientist uh, as far as toxicology and environment ecology so no upsc really wants to know that are you sensible enough as far as the environmental issues are there in your surrounding okay so very simple are you understanding that at the back side of yours there is a dumping ground and is leaking the water and coming to the river system is killing the fish and is also killing the young ones then what are the things that i need to do you are not supposed to go to the chemist shop and buy a particular uh, cleaning as a no you at least know that problem to protect from it at least you know where to approach and make it happen okay so this is something that essential person should be doing it 
So in the examination, you will not be asking about the chemical formula of some toxic substances or the reaction that takes place in the atmosphere. So will not. But at least you will be knowing that if the smoke condition is very much here in Delhi, then one particular quick solution will be spreading the water with the help of water cannon because all those particulate matters, when the rainfall happens, it gets down. And then you collect it somewhere else and place it somewhere else safely, right? So very general. That will be the, we already know that burning the kerosene oil, burning the LPG, LPG will be less toxic, right? That at least we know. We do not know what kind of glass, what molecular formula, what kind of molarity. We don't require it, right? So, as far as the pollution is concerned, we will not go into the science, deep science of, pol of, uh, of the pollution, but we will talk about the issues. What are the issues? So, as far as the air pollution is concerned, we have the issues of ozone depletion, we have the issues of climate change, we have the issues of, say for example, eutrophication in the water, addition of the heavy metals in the water, we talk about the effluents getting drained in the natural water system, right? Then we will talk about like as a pollutant because like is causing a lot of hormonal disimbalance and is misdirecting the birds and the other animals that migrate at night. Then we will also be talking about sound as one of the very important pollutants today. The soundscapes that surround us is getting a lot of a traumatic impact on us, right? And this is also causing a lot of wrong to the sonar or the echolocation that is practiced by many of the animals while navigating from one place to another place. So, then we have the pollution associated with the radiation. So this is again one of the very interesting because we consider that nuclear energy is a clean energy, clean energy. But nuclear waste is a pollutant. So the best, So now we have to design where are we going to dispose this particular nuclear waste? Where are we going to keep in a particular place so that after 50 years, 60 years, this radioactivity will be reduced and it can be not harmful. So that needs to be done very well. And today we are also promoting the nuclear energy by establishing nuclear reactor. And nuclear reactor establishments are also very vulnerable to radiation accident. So this is extremely very important. At one point of time, the radiation will be useful for radiotherapy and remove uh, or kill a cancerous organ in the, a cancerous body. But radiation which kills the cancerous cells can also kill the normal cell. And this particular radiation can also mutate our gene and cause a lot of problems which we have never seen before. So one has to be taken care of. It increases the self life of the vegetables. That one tomato that I collected from the Gujarat will be sold after 60 days in Walmart without reducing the value, without reducing the quality. And that is because you have been radiating that particular uh, vegetables with the help of radiation, certain radiation unit, and it kills those enzymes, it kills those particular insect larva, insect eggs, Okay, in that particular tomato without compromising the taste and its self life. It's a good one. But the problem is, if it is done, if it is mishandled, if it has gone to the wrong direction, it is going to impact so negatively. Then we have some of these particular problems which have come in, very common. One is solid waste. Now the solid waste is so much in the big cities that our dump yards are burning day in and day out. And we cannot completely incinerate. We cannot completely recycle. That's a very interesting situation that we are fighting. In many of the cities today, we have hills and hills of this dump materials are okay building up. If you happen to go in metro in some parts of Delhi, you just come out in the Salimar Bagh area or the others, you will see a big hill. And that particular hill is nothing but it is a matter of solid waste that the city have generated. And that's one example. There are this kind of hills in many parts of Delhi. Ghazipur, you go, you will find it. So these are some, so trucks and trucks are climbing up. So when I first came to Delhi, I thought that which hill is this? But it's not a hill. It is the solid waste uh, product of this city and after some time the government is unable to burn it completely and dispose of what we do is they do the land 
filling so some lane cover will be there they started planting the trees and it looks very green after some time the city landscape looks better but what is there between is an epicenter it is the dormant volcano or which is bombarding which is exposing not only upward is also pumping down a lot of poisons in the ground the groundwater is going to be polluted and some foolish fellow like us will be buying the lane uh, after some times when the government started allowing those green paths to be a lot for housing society and i will go there oh very nice variable hills and a lake and view of the city from my <laughs> but you know after some time you are using all those pollutants on day you are exposed to it you will be ending in the hospital ward very soon so that's the kind of a situation solid waste and in solid waste along with this we have electronic waste which is extremely dangerous to the electronic waste and electronic waste have a lot of chemicals in it okay so which cannot be easily burned and in india the informal sector of the economy is handling the recycling which is very dangerous because without proper knowledge without proper technology without proper rules and regulation you know recycling this particular electronic waste is bringing more dangers than uh, any kind of benefits electronic waste is again one problem then we have uh, this plastic is again one very serious problem today we say that our fishes and birds are dying not because of empty stomach but because of full of plastics in the stomach so that's the kind of uh, the plastic pollution that we are uh, having in the pacific ocean we have islands and islands of plastic bottles congregated together and when you look from the space it looks like another island being created by the pollutants floating on the surface of the ocean so that's the range of plastic impact that we have so along with this what we uh, find is another pollution which is extremely dangerous and quite new to us and that is biomedical waste biomedical waste so what are the issues and what are the policies that the government is enacting in order to fight against this we will be looking in details in the coming classes so biomedical waste for example we have the covid care centers and the healthcare activists are using the ppe so ppe is used when a particular person uh, in the detection detection center or the patient is already there but where are you disposing those particular chemicals who is handling it who is collecting it where is getting transported is something that needs to be taken care of right so biomedical waste is again one very serious in india we are going to develop multi speciality hospitals in every district and in the cities every kilometers you will start having this biomedical waste so tons and tons of human materials which is being operated out which is stained with the blood and infectious agents or the tumors taken from the body are they all ending in the hospital incineration site or the recycling site nobody knows okay so one has to be very much accountable as regards to this kind of pollutants which is a new pollutants and a new norm for us so biomedical waste and what is government doing that is again one thing that we should be knowing and uh, yes we have environmental impact assessment that means any kind of developmental activities that we take it up we need to see what might be the bad impact and if you know the bad impact what are the solutions that we can take it up so that development happens without any negative impact that is what is called environmental impact assessment it takes more time than any other kind of activities because you are imagining the kind of impact and its solution for the coming 50 years 100 years so it is a pro development process hence it naturally takes lot of time but taking time is good because it will prevent us from committing mistakes right so environmental impact assess what are the developmental activities in our country where environmental impact assessment has to be taken up what are the categories of developmental activities where environmental activities is not required and if environmental impact assessment is required whether it is a central government or the state government which would be handling the clearance of it 
that we will be looking in details when we talk about the environmental rules and regulation including environmental impact assessment so why is the environmental impact assessment a very serious issue now right at the same time lot of money is lying waste that's what some of the company owners will be saying we are willing to pay and invest so much of the money but why this particular developmental activities is not taking place so in this category we will find three of the important categories of development in the country one is called as a another one we talk about b and c kind of the category here the in the a category we will find that developmental activities is um, you know, or before it is finally implemented it's the central government which will take care of it which will uh, give the clearance these are mega projects like river, river valley projects then we have the b category where the environmental clearance after the due course of environmental impact assessment done is going to be laid by the by the state government these are small scale industries where the pollution will be less or it is not uh, what to say uh, like river valley projects so these are the categories of the developmental activities and there are certain developmental activities which the government have taken for the sovereignty of the country and in this particular case there is no environmental impact assessment done so this is what are the advantages what are the steps in this particular context in the exam more questions are expected from the case study not from how do you do this environmental impact assessment so it will be a case that is like an oil company is trying to explore oil from this particular coastal site and this particular oil exploration is going to lead into lot of pollution in the surrounding area but the villages in that particular island is depending on the fish population that is there when this fish population will be affected by the oil exploration so how would you how will you see this particular project? project okay what are the steps that this particular project should be say for example sustainable or whether this particular project should go ahead or not so this kind of case studies might be expected in the exam so in 2014 we have had a very interesting questions on this so please look at the question paper or we can uh, discuss uh, sometime later on so this is about the environmental impact assessment and besides this we can we are also going to talk about the governance of biodiversity in this particular case we shall be talking about the diversity as far as the biodiversity is concerned we talk about convention on biological diversity so we talk about the convention on biological diversity and in this we will talk about the conference of parties 1 2 3 4 we'll talk about the nagoya protocol how it is being implemented or when are we going to implement then we talk about ig targets for the conservation of biodiversity then we will also talk about those particular areas where the global institution will take a lead role for the conservation of biodiversity everywhere in the world so we talk about uh, the conference of parties 1 that took place in 1994 then conference of parties 10 which took took place in nagoya which becomes one of the very important milestone in the whole discourse of the of this conservation of biological diversity we will talk about some of the global uh, conservation institution for example we'll talk about ramsar convention we'll talk about montrex record question that already come from there we'll talk about the conservation of the uh, migratory species of the world we'll talk about the convention on international trade in endangered species and how they are functioning then we will also talk about wildlife protection act of india how far it is uh, successful in terms of the conservation of indian flora and fauna then we will talk about environmental protection act which is the nodal agency to look into it we also will be talking about national biodiversity act which is one of the act specifically designed to attain the issues of biodiversity in the country then we'll talk about national biodiversity authority state biodiversity board district committees and alike and why should biodiversity conservation be one of the mainstream developmental activities in the panchayat in the municipal in the rurals in the urban 
and so on and so forth. Then we have another issue which is impacting on us that is about the climate change. And as far as the climate change is concerned, we will talk about United Nations Convention Framework on Climate Change. United Nations, Con uh, I'm sorry, it is United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. We'll look into this particular convention and the kind of working principles that it has. So here we'll talk about IPCC working groups, assessment report and what this assessment reports are telling us as far as the bio as far as the climate change is concerned so this is again one particular interesting topic and very relevant topic for the examination and also to associate us to this whole discourse of the environment and the cli so climate change when we talk about it is an erratic change in the uh, in the climatic conditions and this erratic change has been uh, affecting the life of the people many of the people are vulnerable in some of the reports in recent time it is claimed that 76 percent of the districts of all the districts of the country 76 percent of all the districts of the country which is near about 64 crores of people are vulnerable to the climate change and its impact so it's a very dangerous hence in india the climate change issue cannot be put in the back burner we cannot wait for some other big countries to help everything for us no it should be starting from our own backyard from our own home from so it should be a bottom of kind of an activity right so this we will be looking into it how this climate change is being uh, seen how is this climate experience is being ex experienced how is this particular climate change going to be okay solved and negotiated and how are we going to challenge this particular issue so here also we will be talking about the conference of parties we will talk about things like kyoto protocol we'll talk about paris agreement what is paris agreement how can paris agreement be a relevant tools to satisfy the objectives and to satisfy the objectives of unfccc and also to fight the challenges against the implementation of Kyoto Protocol. So this is something that we'll talk about. For example, in the country, now we are claiming in intended nationally determined contributions that 30% of our GDP will come from non-fossil fuel sources. That means you are talking about the solar, you are talking about the wind, and then you are talking about other renewable resources. What will happen to the states where the wind energy is less and when the biomass energy is more? Right? Are we going to remove those particular biomass and replace with windmill and solar panels? We will not do that. So every state will have their own customized way of sensing the issue and giving the solutions, finding the solutions together. So in India, we will talk about our targets, our national commissions and our national agenda and our national activities and our national goals in order to solve the problem of biodiversity loss and climate change. So this is a brief note on the whole syllabi of the environmental ecology section of the syllabus of the civil services examination, both mains and uh, preliminary. It will be a very interesting and easy way of understanding one of the most relevant and one of the most scoring uh, subject or one of the most scoring area and the one which is always associated with us you know the oxygen carbon dioxide water i think this is something that we associate with them every now and then right so this is a subject for us this is a subject which is contemporary this is a subject which is also as old as human culture and this is a subject which will also give us and which will also help us in hoping and imagining for a secure developed and a beautiful earth for every one of us Thank you. Happy reading and I will be really happy to, what to say, get questions and queries from you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>